This uh, piece of oak here, an off cut, and uh, I'm going to use it to cut out my another of these woodpecker shapes. Now, one thing to remember when you're cutting it out is it, this applies to general woodwork and in general, actually. Firstly, you want to really maximize the wood as much as you can rather than wasting it. In other words, don't just plonk your character in the middle and chop it out and then waste all this around here. It pays to think about it a bit first. For example, in this case, if you put the cut out there you still got a fair chunk there I could even put another one cut another one out from that piece there so I'd have two or use that for something else now to also to take into consideration is the grain on this particular creature here the woodpecker he's got a long pointed beak and that has a tendency to snap off being, being the thinnest part and the same there so really you don't want the grain running that way along the woodpecker because it would easily snap off there. If you could have the grain running that way down the beak and down through that pivot point it'll make it much stronger. So if you look at this piece of oak the grain is going across like this. So actually that is probably in my opinion the best place to place it to cut because you've got that that way the grain is going that way. Okay, it's going that way on the tail, but the tail is fairly thick. There is a reason for that being thick. Um, you have to take into account that on the woodpecker, the pivot point is on the tail. And you've got to put a little hook and eye, hook in there, an eye, whatever you want to call it, screw it in there. And because this is moving all the time with the wind, it does tend to put a tendency on that to come loose. And therefore, if you make the tail very thin, like a woodpecker's tail is probably quite thin, it, it, it will tend to pull out, so a bit more meat on the tail does do a better job and keeps that hook from coming out really. If it's too thin it will it will split with the continued movement, so I always make the tail a bit fatter. Think carefully before you cut wood, because it's a valuable resource. Don't waste it. Don't worry if you can't draw and you can't paint, because I can't either to be honest. I'm hopeless at it. But my wife, she's a good artist. But for some reason, she won't paint my whirly gigs. I've tried to get her to do it. She says, oh no, I can't do that. I can't paint. Well, she can paint. Because this uh, woodpecker was actually a painting she did. And uh, I managed to find it. She hid it away somewhere. She didn't want anybody to see it for some reason. Because she thinks she can't paint. And I thought it was marvellous. So all I did, I just stole her picture. And I scanned it into the computer. And then I made it into a line drawing. So I could print it out and then copy it. And that's what I did. And I, I've, all I've done, I've created the shape like that. I mean, it looks like a, it doesn't look much like a woodpecker, I grant you there. But once you put the paint on, it's not too bad actually. And so I just cut it out. It's dead easy to cut out. Uh, again, it's trial and error where you put the pivots and that. Um, but once you do the painting, it comes to life a bit more. I think I think it's quite effective. And as I say, I'm no expert on painting. In fact, I'm quite hopeless at it. I, I hate painting things. Although I quite like painting whirly gigs for some reason. Because it's, uh, I don't know, you can put your own character in. It just seems a bit of fun, really. But he don't look too bad. He's got a bit um, faded now because he's been in the sun a lot. Um, if you'll notice on this one, just a little point to, to, to make out. There's a little brass tube in there look there's a reason for that if you don't put that in you don't have to do it obviously but it just sticks out a little bit each side which is done purposely you want the woodpecker to pivot move the camera a bit so you can see you want the wood you'll be on his little shaft like that and you'll want him to pivot if you put just pure wood obviously the water's going to get in it's going to swell up and it'll jam it won't work properly if you drill a larger hole and put a little bit of tube or pipe in there it acts as a bearing on the rod like that so you'll move quite freely and you won't get any problems and do make the rod a tiny bit longer than the width of the the, the, the creature whatever creature it is like tiny bit not much and then you you can put a couple of washers on there and it'll allow it to pivot if you don't make it a little bit longer it will tend to jam up when you tighten it up it's just a little point but makes a difference anyway so that's fairly easy and it's easy to cut on the fret saw as i said before in many of my videos uh don't worry if you don't have a fret saw or a scroll saw i know they're cheap to buy and if you haven't got one you ought to have one if that's if you're a woodworker and if you like making whirly gigs if you're going to make more than one it's worth buying one because 
It, they're marvellous little machines. Um, if you want to know more, have a look at my video. I've done a video on uh, why should you pay a lot of money for a fetch saw when you can buy a cheap one, and you'll find that you can buy direct cheap ones. And if you look on eBay, there's people who have bought them and then find they can't use them for, for one reason or another. I don't know why, because they're so simple, it's probably they ain't bothered really. Uh, you can buy them dirt cheap, and they are marvellous in the workshop. Not for just doing fretwork, you can do anything on them. They're almost like a mini bandsaw. Anyway, I shouldn't be going on about that, because that's another story. But I'm just saying, if you haven't got one, don't worry. Because you can use other things, like, for example, I'll just get one down and show you. Oops. I don't use these very often. Uh, this is a, a coping saw. Oh, that's actually... I, that's not a very good example because I've got a tile, a tile blade in there, and that's one of those um, multi-cut direction horrible things they are. Uh, it cuts in all directions. That's for cutting tiles. So that's no good. Here's another one. This is a very. I've had this one since I was a, about nine, I think. I bought this as a child, or it was given to me. Probably I probably didn't buy it. And that's got a proper coping saw blade in. And you can use that for cutting these out. It's pretty hard work on hardwood, easy on softwood. Or if you've got one of these, that's a, an old-fashioned fret saw, then you can cut it with that. These are I used these for a long, long time before I got managed to get a machine. I used one of these for cutting things out, and, and they are really good. That's a Hobbies, original Hobbies one. It's it's um, This one's probably getting on for 100 years old now, because it was my grandfather's. And... Uh, I use these all the time to do my fret work before I manage to get a, a decent machine. So you can do it with that. But as I say, that you don't have to have a machine to do it. You can do it by hand if you wish. Uh, the other thing I should mention about the woodpecker. Um, obviously, one thing to point out is this little piece where his legs fit. Try and make it, and you'll notice I've made it a bit fatter on this one. Uh, because it, if you make it too weak, it will snap off. Especially if you've got the grain going the wrong way. Um, plywood would obviously last longer but even so if you can make it a bit wider it might not look correct because a woodpecker doesn't have great thick fat legs does he but or she but in actual fact it will make it stronger now for the stand for the woodpecker all I've done again you don't have to do this you can use any old wood this is a bit of wood I cut out of the hedge actually a bit of an old elm tree that had died and all I've done I've just cut it in two and then inserted another piece down the middle and I've glued it with a, a decent outdoor glue and then, you see, it's even got woodworm in, look. But that doesn't matter. And that's made a little stand for a woody woodpecker, like that. And then you can simply screw it or fix it onto your whirly gig base. And woody fits in the top there. You just drill a hole through. And it makes a more natural thing. Obviously, you would tend to round the corners over and just tidy it up a bit. But as I say, it makes it look like a proper wooden post he's on. I did try putting him that way. Uh, so he was pecking at a log, but it, it didn't work so well. I kept having a problem with it, so in the end I changed it and just had him rocking like that, which seemed to work. So anyway, that's the woodpecker.